Mobile device management is a method of securing mobile devices. So when an organization issues mobile devices or maybe has a bring your own device policy, they have a method of providing some sort of security for these mobile devices because these are mobile accessible access points into your network. They can create a great deal of vulnerabilities. Uh, they can introduce the possibility of data theft. The device can be lost with organization data on it. So there needs to be something to help protect that data. And that comes in the form of mobile device management software. So this software is installed onto the device and protects data at rest and also data in motion. Mobile device software can be used to create a VPN that works uh, to create a secure connection from a mobile device to the organization's network. It can also be used to set up security controls on the device to help protect data at rest and provide settings that help keep the confidentiality and data integrity of the organization's data. So mobile devices have a certain authentication method and it usually makes sense to make that authentication method as secure as possible. Preferred method is usually a password, a complex password, at least eight characters long with at least numbers, symbols, upper and lower case characters. Uh, something that follows the organization's password policy. As you know, the more complex a password is, the harder it is for attacks like brute force attacks, uh, attacks using rainbow tables, and other sorts of attacks are less effective. It's harder to conduct those attacks against a strong password. Some devices are unlocked with just a pin, and for those devices, a pin should fall, there should be a mobile device policy that creates a specific number, uh, minimum character number for the pin because pins are inherently less secure. They're easier to crack with rainbow tables, with brute force attacks, etc. Uh, though for most devices, it's you can set it up to lock or disable the device after a certain number of failed login attacks, making those brute force attacks basic, virtually impossible. Some devices have biometric login or biometric authentication. This can come in the form of a fingerprint or perhaps a face recognition or a retina scanner. And we've talked about how certain biometric login or biometric authentication can be uh, susceptible to error rates and the crossover error rate, but that can be an acceptable form of authentication. If an organization wants to use two-factor authentication, they can have something like a biometric scan or maybe a fingerprint scan, a face recognition, and then also a password or PIN. Of course, the authentication method can only be controlled either if one, the organization issues the device and sets that up for the user, or two, through the use of mobile device management software on a user's personal device. Uh, Lock screens should be configured to only show minimum information, uh, no background information, no application information, just maybe the time and a blank screen. Otherwise, attackers might be able to glean information from that, those lock screen notifications, and which is of course undesirable. And also lock screen should be set, the screen itself should be set to lock after a certain amount of time in concordance with the organization's uh, security policy, much like a laptop would be set to log off after a set period of time. And then devices uh, should also be set to unlock using that secure method of authentication like the password, the biometric authentication. Devices can also be set to delete all of their data as an extreme measure if a certain number of login attempts are failed over the course of uh, time. So if a user fails to log in after 10 attempts, perhaps then the device is wiped. Oftentimes in most modern devices, this login attempt uh, is designed basically to prevent brute force attacks. And it makes more sense to restrict the number of login attempts that can happen over a period of time more than just wiping the device entirely. So maybe after 10 login attempts that are failed, you can no longer log in until maybe an hour later. 
it's still going to prevent an attack, like a brute force attack, which requires thousands of login attempts. MDM software can control what type of applications are installed on a mobile device. An application whitelist will state the types of uh, applications that can be installed. It's uh, a method for, just like any other whitelist, it's a method of saying these are approved, while blacklists are saying these are unapproved. A whitelist is much more useful with a mobile device because it's unrealistic for a security department to maintain awareness of all malicious applications and then say that they're all uh, not permitted. And then MDM software can also specify from where a mobile device can access or download applications. So if it's an Apple device, the MDM software can say you can only download from the Apple Store, or maybe an Android device can only download from the Google Store uh, or Google Play. It's possible with some devices to download third-party applications, and that can present a security risk because these organizations are not vetted. At least they're vetted with an Apple in the Apple Store. Not so much with Google Play, but data at rest can be protected by conducting a full device encryption. This will encrypt all of the data on the mobile device when it's at rest and then only decrypt the data when it's needed. There can also be what's called storage segments or storage segmentation, which will create separate drive storages uh, locations within the device. And then these device, the, all the corporate data, the organization's data can be stored in those segments. And then that segment is encrypted. This can be helpful for a bring your own device policy. And then containerization is a similar technology, but well, it's not really similar. Containerization makes a virtual instance within the mobile device. So it's a sandbox within the um, mobile device. And then all the applications and data are manipulated in that sandbox. So you're basically using a hypervisor on the mobile device to create a virtual instance. And then that virtual instance is where the users manipulate their data. Devices have certain geographical features and they connect. Most mobile devices have ability to connect to GPS satellites or global positioning system satellites. And these GPS satellites allow uh, for triangulation to locate the device itself. So with geolocation, you can locate the device. This can be useful if that device is stolen or lost, and the user can use the MDM software or the security team can use the MDM software to pinpoint the location of that device and then perhaps find it for the user. Uh, if it's lost or if it was stolen, then perhaps notify the authorities. Geofencing is a method of segmenting or allocating certain geographical areas that contain specific security settings. So you might state, you might place a geofence that includes a building, your office building. And whenever that device is in that geofence, certain settings are enabled or disabled. So maybe the device only connects to the network within a certain geofence or the device has certain hardware controls taken away within a geofence. Uh, imagine a scenario where you have secure information, you have a secure uh, information facility, and you don't want anybody taking pictures in that facility, or your employees are taking pictures. So you set up a geofence that includes the, the boundaries of that facility, and then all the corporate issued devices switch off the camera and microphone automatically when the employee enters that facility. That's a use of geofencing. <laughs> Geotagging is a method of adding metadata to photos and files that state where that uh, picture was taken. Okay, and this can be a problem if an uh, organization wants to keep a certain location secure. And with the federal government, with classified information, it might behoove the government to issue devices that disable geotagging. So, uh, I know U.S. government likes to use Blackberries, so oftentimes Blackberries will have geotagging disabled because if that's used to take a picture, then that you don't want to have a geotag associated with that picture that can provide some information for malicious actors. Notifications can be pushed through MDM software to uh, help users 
understand security best practices, though I recommend that you use these sparingly. And then you can also use MDM software to remotely wipe a device if it's stolen to protect uh, the information. Depending on the deployment model, this remote wipe feature is either automatically installed or it has to be configured later. If the user is bringing their own device, users might object to participating and bring your own device policy if that bring your own device policy allows the organization to remotely wipe their data. But I've seen it, I've seen it implemented.